Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. This is our second webinar in our series this spring, and we're excited to have you with us. My name is Amy Perkins, and I'm the Marketing Manager for our Early Childhood Assessment Tools at Brooks. This webinar is on assessing children using the Assessment Evaluation and Programming System for Infants and Children, or AAPS for short. Kevin Warg, our AAPS specialist here at Brooks, is going to share a presentation about the tool. But first, I'd like to go over some housekeeping tasks. You'll be muted for the webinar, but if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box on your GoToWebinar panel, or you can tweet them using hashtag TalkAboutTools. We'll take these questions after Kevin's presentation during the Q&A portion. For best audio and screen quality of the webinar, you may want to exit any unneeded programs. For the presentation, you also might want to minimize the GoToWebinar bar on your monitor so you can see more of your screen. You can do that by clicking the orange button with the arrow in the top corner of the control bar. If you would need to enlarge the bar again to ask a question, you can just click the orange button again and the control panel will pop back out. Also, we're recording this webinar and you'll receive a link to the recording and a follow-up email tomorrow. We'll also post a link to the recording on the Brooks Publishing website so you can watch it or share it with your colleagues. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Kevin Warg. Kevin has worked with APS customers for the past seven years to help them understand the system. He's very familiar with our online management system, APS Interactive, which you'll learn about during today's presentation, and he frequently works with programs to help them set up their, set up their system. So Kevin, I'd like to turn it over you, to you to start our presentation. Thank you, Amy. Good afternoon, everyone, and let me welcome you to the webinar for the assessment evaluation and programming system, as you'll hear, hear me refer to it as the AEPS. Uh, before we get started um, in, for today's presentation, uh, I have two questions, two poll questions that Amy is going to bring up and I would like you to answer. Uh, first question is just want to get an idea of uh, the group of people that I'm speaking with today and want to find out your level of experience with the AEPS. Uh, have you used it? Are you currently using it? Um, do you know a little bit about it? Or are you not familiar at all with the AEPS? So we're going to take a couple seconds uh, just to fill those out. So Kevin, people are voting now. I'm going to give them a couple more seconds for everyone to get a chance to vote. Okay, I think so. Now I'm going to um, share it. So Kevin, I'm not sure if um, you can see this on your screen or not, but it um, looks like 8% are currently use APS, about 20% have used APS in the past, 28% um, are familiar with the APS, and 44% uh, are not familiar. So we have a good variety of people on the webinar with us today. Great. Thank you, Amy. Um, my goal for today's presentation, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to give you a background of and history of the AEPS, why it's used, how it's used, who uses it, uh, and then I'm going to talk about uh, our AEPS interactive system, which you'll also hear me refer to it as the AEPSI. Uh, one more question before we get started, uh, and that question is, what age range of children do you work with? Do you work with uh, birth to three kiddos, uh, three to five or three to six kiddos, or, or is that uh, a mixed number of kids do you work with? So that's up on the screen now, and the answers are coming in. I'll just give it a few more seconds. Okay. Um, so it looks like um, a small majority of the people work with three to six-year-olds. We have 27% work with birth to three, 42% work with three to six, 23% do birth to six, the whole range, um, and then we have 8% other. Thanks so much, Amy. Uh, just want to remind everyone during the presentation, if you do have any questions that do come up, please make sure you submit our questions to our panel, and we'll make sure in our question and answer session that we will try to answer all the questions. And if not, we will also send a follow-up of, of all questions that were asked and answered, including questions that we did not get a chance to answer during the question and answer.
You heard us talk about the AEPS several times in the past few minutes. What is the AEPS? AEPS, or Assessment Evaluation and Programming System, is a comprehensive linked assessment intervention and evaluation system for children from birth to six years. The AEPS uh, covers birth to six years, but it splits it into two separate assessment levels. Level one, which covers birth to three, and level two, which covers three to six years. The areas covered, or you'll also hear, hear me refer to them as curricular areas, are the fine motor, gross motor, adaptive, cognitive, social, and social communication. And a wide variety of people in early intervention, early childhood, complete and use the AEPS. It's made up of interdisciplinary teams, such as early interventionists, early childhood teachers, specialists such as your OTs, PTs, SLPs, school psychologists. It also has a big family component to the AEPS. The authors of the AEPS feel very strongly about including families uh, with child's every, children's everyday interventions. The AEPS is curriculum based and criteria and referenced assessment, so there's always a criteria that you're referencing the skills against. It's highly sensitive to the development and progress of children with special needs. What that means is if you have a child that may not be able to complete a certain skill that's being asked, you can always, the test is sensitive enough that you can make adjustments uh, so that child has a chance to be able to show that they're emergent in a skill or mastered because of maybe a specific disability or impairment like hearing, visual, motor. The AEPS is an observational assessment tool. It's a tool that's used in a child's natural environments. So if you work for a center-based program, uh, it's, you would observe the child in the center. Or if it's a home-based program, you would observe the child in the home with the family. It's family-focused, as you already heard me mention. And I'm going to get into a little bit more in more detail pretty soon. Works very well with interdisciplinary teams. Uh, the tool was not designed to have one person fill out the information. Uh, it's, that certainly can happen. However, the test is designed to work well with teams that have or, or users that have expertise, maybe in fine motor and gross motor and social communication and, and the, the various curricular areas that the assessment assesses. It's widely used throughout the United States and around the world, especially Australia, Singapore, and several countries in Europe. A lot of people sometimes think the AEPS is only for children with developmental needs or dis developmental delays or disabilities. However, AEPS can be used for typically developing children, children who are at risk, English language and dual language learners, children who come from diverse cultures and backgrounds, and children with disabilities, delays, or at, or, or at risk for a dis disability. The AEPS is extensively researched, which makes it extremely reliable and valid. The AEPS studies show that the birth to three years left, birth to three years, found that the reliability correlation of 0.88 and a re test retest reliability for three to six years of 0.97. The tool is designed to focus on child's strengths and needs. And again, you hear me talking about promoting the family involvement. The authors of the tool strongly believe that the AEP, the family sh should be included in a child's intervention. And that's why they promote family involvement and really encourage it with programs that use the AEPS. And it's a progress monitoring tool. So it's designed to monitor a child's performance over time. Over time could be several times a year, uh, several times throughout the, the life of a child within your program. Uh, to get the most out of the tool, it's recommended that you assess a child at least two to three times a year to be able to track child's progress. What are some of the benefits of the AEPS? Well, it supports staff that use it in writing appropriate IFSP or IEP goals. 
and helps with planning individualized intervention. Uses that team approach to service delivery, again, working with that interdisciplinary team, and you have different um, specialties working with one another. If you're a program out there that's considering using the AEPS or AEPSI to report OSEP outcomes, you'll be able to see the crosswalk between AEPS and OSEP, or Office of Special Education Programs, at www.aepsinteractive.com. Finally, what we've talked about, the AEPS being family focused. Um, the authors on the of the tool really recommend the, the family involvement of a child's intervention. They do that by promoting introductory meeting with family members, conducting the family report, or completing the family report of the AEPS, including the family with IFSP and IEP planning, and including them on ongoing evaluation and meetings. The family report was developed to obtain information from parents and other caregivers about the children's skills and abilities across the six curricular areas of development. It's split up into several sections. Section one asks about daily participation. When, where, and with whom does your child usually eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? How do you help your child get dressed or undressed? And in what community activities does your child participate? And it really asks for that information from the family so they can get an idea of what goes on and how involved mom and dad are or, or the child's caregiver are at home. Section two asks about specific skills within those six domains or curricular areas. Another section, um, it wants to know what the intervention priorities are for mom and dad. It really helps them identify goals for their child, not just letting the program set those goals. Just like an AEPS assessment, a family report can be used multiple times per year. I want everyone to keep this image in the forefront of their minds. Uh, reason being is, is because we're going to see it very soon in a few slides. But the AEPS is a truly linked system. It links assessment, goal development, intervention, and evaluation. It's a circular process that works with your program's goals and philosophies. It doesn't replace anything, doesn't replace any curriculum that you currently have. It's supposed to work with it. Well, how does it work? First, you need to gather your information about the child that you're assessing. You observe the child's development during, during routine activities and plays. An observation, if you're using the AEPS in its true form as an observational assessment tool, observations are going to take about a two-week period. And that's just letting the kids play, interact in daily activities you may have set up in your program or set up at the home. Um, you also are going to talk with child's caregivers to gain information. Uh, and you really, this is where the family report comes in again. You're going to use that family report again. Some items you may need to use direct testing. Not all items, depending on the child that you're with, you're going to be able to observe. So that's where the direct test method would come into play. You then record results on the child observation data recording form. Or you're going to hear me refer to it as the CODRF. As you can see here, the CODRF is your main protocol form that you use to collect data on the AEPS. As you can see here, the, we're looking at a fine motor area for birth to three. And at the top of the screen, it gives a scoring key. The scoring for the AEPSI is on a zero to two scale. A zero means that the criteria is not seen, or the child does not meet the criteria. A one means that the criteria is inconsistently met. That's an emerging skill. And a two means that the criteria is mastered. It's consistent. You can consistently see that skill with the child. You'll see with the with the CODRF, it's designed to be it's designed to to hold up to four assessments per per cadre or CODRF. You'll be able to select items in this corner that you want to include in the IFSP or the IEP. And then each separate assessment, you would give a score for each item. And you would score a note if any assistance was provided on a particular skill. If the child's behavior interfered 
good if you use that direct test method. That's where those notes come into play. Once you observe the child in the assessment and has jotted down the scores, you then score the AEPS test, and then you use those results to determine, determine the child's level of functioning, and then help identify their goals. You're going to identify the goals by talking with the child's family and other team members that have also assessed the child. You'll identify ne which next skills to target, and then if necessary, you'll use that information to create a meaningful IFSP or IEP goal for the child moving forward. Once you've gone in and met with the team, if you've scored the AEPS, you'll then use the AEPS curriculum so you can embed learning activities to help the child reach the goals. Each skill or test item in the AEPS, it corresponds to an item in the AEPS curriculum. The curriculum items for the birth to three include activity-based teaching suggestions, environmental arrangements, instructional sequences, and teaching considerations. The three to six curriculum include intervention activities, environmental arrangements, and daily routines and suggestions. Again, these curriculum activities are designed to help you monitor the child's progress. You can choose to use them or you can use what you currently work with in your own program. Uh, if you already have a curriculum that you use within your program, the AEPS can be used with other curricula. Once you've now had your intervention meeting, had your goal planning meeting, you're now looking at the skills that you've developed. Now you're going to assess the child's progress using the AEPS again. You're monitoring the progress on any individual skills, or you can reassess entire domains. Depending on how your program works or how your program is set up, you can complete complete the entire AEPS mid-year or at the end of the year, or some programs do, will do it quarterly. And again, you're, with that family involvement, you're going to continue to meet with families and team members to discuss the child's progress and next steps. You always want to be updating the, the progress and, and the, the intervention priorities and so forth. What we see here is just a way to, to monitor a child's progress using the AEPS. And as we'll get into very shortly, this is the child progress report uh, from AEPS Interactive. And this report was developed to monitor individual, ch or individual ch children's progress over time. And as children meet the stated criteria for the goal, as you can see, the, there is, sorry about that, the, square, the squares as they meet the criteria for those goals or the objectives, progress can be indicated by striking or shading through the particular skill. Teams are often going to signify a child's specific performance excuse me, by coloring or shading these arrows and squares completely when scored with the two or partially when scored with the one and leaving, leaving information blank if scored with the zero. As you can see, when you generate this report on AEPSI, the AEPSI will automatically fill the information out partially if it, if it was scored with a 1, and fully if it was scored with a 2. And you can see in the right-hand corner, test 2 is operated by the dark purple, and test 1 is represented by the gray. Here's that link system picture that we just saw a few slides ago. I wanted to just reiterate how the AEPS, it all comes together as that link system with assessment, goal development, intervention, evaluation, and then meeting back with assessment again. This really ties into the AEPS being a progress monitoring and ongoing assessment. The AEPSI, or a, I'm sorry, AEPS Interactive or the AEPSI is the web-based management system for the AEPS. If you're using the AEPS to report on OSEP, uh, the AEPSI will automatically will help programs meet reporting mandates by automatically generating OSEP scores. It's also going to help effectively manage data. 
uh, instead of having a paper trail by using the paper and pencil version of the AEPS, all the information that you enter into AEPSI is automatically stored for you, including all assessments given for a child and all reports. And depending on how familiar you are with the AEPS, uh, as some of you, as most of you said, you're not that familiar with the tool. The once you become familiar with it, the AEPSI is going to help significant, significantly shorten assessment time. AEPSI will also help you organize effective group assessments, and we'll touch base on that very shortly. Automates many reporting functions, will help improve work with families. It's going to help in the IFSP and IEP planning and programming as well. And depending on your state and your state's eligibility criteria, it's going to help you to determine and or corroborate eligibility for services. What we're looking at here is a screenshot of AEPSI called the My AEPSI page. This is the page that everyone sees when they log in to their AEPSI account. And it's a snapshot of everything that's going on within your program. As you can see, all the items that are listed here are shortcuts to the tabs at the top. Your My Children section gives you a brief, a brief look at the children that you work with. And if you click the View All button, it's going to show you the whole list of kids that, you, that work with you. Your calendar event serves as a reminder for any important events or meetings you have coming up for a child or with a child's family in AEPSI. The messages section would be for a program's AEPSI administrator to broadcast a system-wide message, welcome uh, program back from summer vacation, or to remind programs to have their um, quarterly or mid-year assessments to be completed by a certain date. Whenever AEPSI is updated, we want to let our AEPSI accounts know who uses or what's been updated and how to access that. And those are always posted in our What's New section. You can always take a look at the assessments that you're currently working on by looking at Assessments in Progress. And by clicking View All, it takes you back to the My Children page as well. In the My Reports, this is a shortcut to view individual child reports, class reports, or program reports that we're going to look at very shortly. What we're looking at now is a look at your My Children page where it gives me the name of kiddos that I have access to, a child ID if you want to include one, and whether or not an assessment is in progress, I need to start a new assessment, or I've completed an assessment and need to start a new one. Just like your My AEPSI page was a snapshot of everything going on within your account, the child summary page is a snapshot of everything that's going on with this child's individual account. The child summary page gives a brief look at the child's summary, any recent activity that anyone on the intervention team maybe went in and, and worked on. This is where you would add a calendar event for a particular child to, submit, to signify an IEP meeting or a meeting with mom and dad. And then the AEPS, I said, it eliminates, the AEPS, I will eliminate that paper trail by listing all the AEPS tests. Some programs will take uh, narrative, um, narrative information and want to include that in the child's assessment, and that can be done in the child journal. The family report we talked about can also be listed here, and the individual child reports as well. Here's a brief look at Fine Motor 1, which is birth to three. And again, the CODRF is no different than the paper and pencil version, except for seeing all four assessment periods at once, you only see two at a time. It's the only major difference. And when using AEPSI, you'll also be able to pull up the, the, correct, or the, I'm sorry, the criteria by clicking on the plus, side, plus signs to the left. Here's a way to look at Here's where you could look at individual child reports. Uh, you have the score summary report, which shows test state, raw score, the possible raw score, and what the percent score for each area of the CODRF would be for that particular assessment. 
The graph score is a visual interpretation of the scoring summary. We have the child progress record, which helps family members and caregivers participate in the ongoing monitoring of the child's progress. Provider note shows all the, term, all the items in an assessment that were marked with a note, either assistance provided, behavior interfered, and so forth. And it will also list any corresponding scores and comments for any items that show in that report. The IFSP IEP summary will show all items that have been checked in the IFSP IEP box and will also indicate IFSP and IEP samples. I'm sorry, sample goals. The eligibility cutoff report will show the area score and the cutoff score for each area of an assessment and then tell whether or not the child is in the range for typically developing children or below the range for typically developing children. And last but not least, you have your present level of functioning report, which shows all items from the AEPS assessment that are grouped by score. So all the items that have mastered are given the score of a 2, emerged given the score of a 1, or not yet observed, which were given the score of a zero. You also have the ability in AEPSI to run aggregate reports. You can do that one of two ways, by class reports or program reports. You can see here we're looking at the, looking at the class reports, and the group snapshots allow providers to gauge the status and measure the progress of their kiddos. Several of the group snapshots that you can see right here are the status of all children. This shows each child's AEPS assessment scores, the possible score, and then percentage score for each of the six areas for the child's most recent assessment. You have the progress of all children report. This is going to give you a quick snapshot of the developmental progress of these kiddos over time. The group goal planning matrix shows each child's goals marked on their latest, his or her latest assessment. And programs can use this to get a quick snapshot of the most critical items that they need to teach and to see which children are working on similar items to group together. The assessment status report is a good way for programs to look at assessments that are currently in progress and to see which scores are given to which goal. And last but not least, the child profile list in the group snapshots will be able to show a program's list of all the kiddos that are listed in AEPSI. I mentioned earlier that the OSEP category, OSEP reports, uh, will help programs generate OSEP reporting for accountability mandates, and as you can see here, we show your entry and progress or exit data, and it's shown in two ways, in aggregate percentages or in the categories for each child, which will show each child's individual scores. And the same thing for the COSEF ratings for uh, ECHO. That will show you entry scores and progress or exit data. Now we're looking at the program reports. There's no, the only difference in the program reports is that instead of being able to look at different classes or different providers, your, a program is looking at this as an entire program. And with group snapshots, you'll see the only difference is you cannot look at the group goal planning matrix when looking at the program reports. Some features I want to highlight real quick in AEPSI are the, the group activities. They're semi-structured activities with seven home-based activities for birth to three. There's eight activities, eight center-based assessment activities for three to six and birth to three. And each set allows teachers to assess all of the AEPS items. They're easily incorporated into any home routine or center-based routine. And with the, the group activities, you can assess up to six kiddos at one time. Here's a quick look at the home-based activities and center-based activities for zero to three and three to six kiddos.
going to quick look at what the sample activity looks like. We're now looking at the dramatic play. And you'll notice the, uh, the skills assessed in the dramatic play are, are the cognitive area, social communication, and several strands of the social communication. And here's what a group CODRF would look like. The difference between this is it's designed to have up to six kids in it, so you can have as many as six or as few as five, four, three, two, even one child. And what's nice about the group activities, if you mark an item for one child that you want to include in the IFSP or IEP, that doesn't mean it marks it for all the different kiddos. Each different child, each child's score is separate from one another. I also want to reference, look at the curriculum reference guide. This is an interactive feature that was just created for AEPSI. There's two versions. There's birth to three curriculum and three to six curriculum. And it includes all the content in curriculum and your three to six curriculum. I'm going to pause my screen real quick. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going into APSI and pulling up the curriculum guide. And you can see on the, CODR, on the CODRF summary page, you have your curriculum reference guide. And this we're looking at for this kid, it was 3 to 6. And this is just to give a brief look at what the AEP goals, daily routines for the fine motor section. When a program purchases AEPSI, the program subscription includes user accounts for all staff, all standard AEPS reports, all the ones that I, that I talked about or shown are automatically included. Whenever we add updates to the system or add new features, there's no add-on fees that need to be paid. They're automatically included. You receive one-on-one -on -one training for the AEPSI staff administrator. We have 24-7 technical support, which is available by phone and email. We also have tutorials on the site for providers and administrators. And programs have free archiving of up to 10% of the child records in their system. To learn more about the AEPS, or to watch a demo of AEPSI, please visit our website, www.aepsinteractive.com. We'll be able to sign up for a free 30-day trial of the system. You can get a demo of AEPSI where I'll be able to go into more depth of the system for you. And you can read frequently asked questions of the tool, both interactive and print. We do have training available uh, through our Brooks on Location program. Our training seminars are set up that the training will be provided by the AEPS developers and researchers behind the tool. The topics at the trainings that would be included are introduction to the AEPS, how to, how to use the AEPS to link assessment, intervention, and evaluation. It will show you how to use the AEPS 
support family involvement, and how to use the AEPS curriculum effectively. And you can always learn more about our Brooks Home Location program at www.brookshomelocation.com. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so if anyone has any questions right now, now's a good time um, to enter them into the question box on your GoToWebinar panel. So if you have it minimized, you can just click that orange button and the control panel will pop back out um, and you can submit some questions. Um, Kevin, I think while we're waiting for some questions to come in, um, do you still have the curriculum reference guide open on your screen? I think if you went back to it and toggled between um, if you could show some of the, how you can see the different activity suggestions and environmental arrangements, um, it might be nice to show, show our listeners how they can um, jump between the different goals and such. Sure, Amy, I was able to pull it back up. Great, thank you. And like I said, this is the curriculum guide for three to six years old. And this is the fine motor, which is strand, it's strand A of the fine motor. And the goal for that is the child uses two hands to manipulate objects, each hand performing different movements. And an objective of that goal would be to the child holds an object with one hand while the other hand manipulates. And you can look at some daily routines. some environmental arrangements. And you'll see here in the example, this talks about uh, an interventionist assisting a child who has a visual impairment. And then you can take a look at intervention activities. That's great. So it's basically all of the content that's in the, the two curriculum volumes. Or we've put them in this interactive guide, so you kind of have it right at your fingertips when you're inside the APSI system. And you'll be able to look at, if you see on the left-hand side, you'll be able to look at all the items in the fine motor section. Or I can go to the other curricular areas as well. Great. Thanks, Kevin. I think that's helpful. Um, we do have, if you want to um, maybe go back to the PowerPoint now, and I can, um, before we start the Q&A, we'll just show, um, so as a thank you for joining all of us today, there's a um, special code on your screen. So if you use this webinar S13 code, um, you can save 20% on any of the APS print products or any of the Brooks products. We have a couple of our um, newer titles on the screen there and you can just use that code when you're ordering online or if you call our customer service line. Um, so Kevin we do have some questions that have been coming in so um, I'm gonna start reading them off. Um, we have a viewer who commented that they wish they'd been able to see all of the reports um, that you mentioned and so I think probably the best thing if someone's interested in seeing reports Kevin do you think is to um, sign up for one of our free demos so you can show all of them? Uh, yes, we recommend signing up for a free demonstration of the site. Uh, the demos work just like today's webinar is working, um, except it's, they're one-on-one -on -one and it's a conversation between me and the person I'm giving the demo, the people I'm giving the demo with. Uh, you can also sign up for a free trial of AEPSI. Um, the AEPSI free trials come with um, two practice killers already loaded into the system with information and assessments already finalized. And what's nice about the free trials are there are no limitations. You can actually go in and look at all the reports and manipulate the reports and, and add uh, practice assessments for the, the test kiddos as well. So 
Uh, I highly recommend the AEPS demo just because you're there speaking with me. I can help answer any questions and so forth. Um, and we also, we do have a handout um, that we could send about all of the reports if you wanted to um, see some samples. So we could do that as well, too. Um, let's see, we have a question about archiving. Um, so we say that we archive 10% of the records. Um, can you define archive as opposed to saving from year to year? Sure. At the end of a program subscription year, uh, children might leave the program, exit out, uh, or move on to move on to kindergarten, but they still want to keep the information in there for OSEP reporting, or just to keep maybe a few child records in the system to go back to at a later time to use as an example. Uh, and what we recommend is that uh, those kiddos get archived. Uh, at the end of a subscription year, we recommend archiving a child record because when you move into your next subscription year, if you keep those children active in the system, even though they're no longer a part of your program, they're still going to be counted as an active kiddo. That way, if you archive them, if they're within the 10% of the child records that you purchase, so if you buy 100 child records, you can archive 10 kids for free, anything above that 10% is a dollar a kid. So you get to keep those children in the system if you need to or if you want to. And then you're able to, like I said, they're not affecting your budget by adding an, act, an active child record cost. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, all right. I'm just scrolling. Um, and we will go ahead and send out the handout with the reports to all the participants. Um, someone asked that question. So we'll make sure that everyone who's listening today um, we'll send a copy of that to you so you can see all the different um, reports that are available. Um, okay, so we have a question. Um, so can multiple users inside the APSI system be accessing the same student record simultaneously? Not simultaneously. You won't be able to have one person in the system working on a child record or inputting um, information into this into the assessment as with someone else doing it. You're allowed to have multiple people in the program have access to the same child record. They're just not allowed to be in the system signed in at two separate locations at the same time. Okay. Thanks. I hope that makes sense. I mean make I yeah you can't overwrite you won't have two people overwriting each other at the same time. Um Okay, a uh, question about the free trials. Can you sign up for the free trials at any time? Um, and yes, you can. You can just go on our APSinteractive.com. You fill out a short form with some information, and then we'll send you um, the access information for your free trial, and it's a 30-day trial. Um, okay, so we have a question from a, a user or a customer who is using the APS to evaluate children. Um, from three to six, and, but sometimes the children are below um, the level of the three to six, um, the three to six level, and they're asking whether if they order volumes three and four, will they have all the printed materials they need? Um, so there are four volumes for the APS, so volume one is the administration guide that has information um, about the background of the APS um, and how to, you know, set up an observation and some basic background, foundational information, and all of the forms are included in Volume 1 in the back. So you can photo, if you want to use the paper versions, you could photocopy all of the forms um, from the back of Volume 1. Um, volume 2 is the test volume, and that's the test volume for both age ranges. So all of the test items are in the same book, um, and that, and by test items, it has all of the items and then the specific criteria um, for each item, like what specific behavior you're looking for. Volume 3 is the curriculum for birth to three years, um, and that has all of the different uh, curriculum and intervention ideas and environmental arrangements that go along with all of the different items in the six domains. Um, and Volume 4 is the curriculum for um, three to six, so it has all of that information for the three to six-year-old. So if you're interested in doing, um, you know, both the test and the curriculum for your program, you really will need the administration guide, the test volume, and then 
the curriculum volumes depending on what age range of kids you work with. Um, if you use the online system, you have access to both um, both levels of the kids. So if even if you had a say a three year old who was um, performing more at a lower level and you needed to test them with the the birth to three items or use the birth to three um, curricula items, you can do that in the online system. Um, it's possible to do that. Kevin, do you have anything else to add for about um, about I, I how much? I was also going to add, if you are a program that works with children three to six, and you have children that are developmentally delayed that they do not have the skills that the three to six uh, age group or, or assessment is asking or, or asking of for the child, you are always able to drop down to the birth to three level to help with the child's pro to help the child's progress. So I always recommend to a, a program that works with three to six year olds to at least have, depending on how your program is set up and how many um, sets you're purchasing, to at least have one set, one complete set, which would be all four volumes. So that way you'll be able to help those children who are significantly delayed uh, with progress. Okay, um, let me see here. So we have a question about um, the birth to three assessment. So for birth to three, how does the assessment separate out? Are there different assessments for each month, each year? That's another good question. And no, there, there's, there's one assessment. You, how the AEPS works is you get your baseline assessment, uh, and then you do progress monitoring from there. So depending on how many times a year, you want to assess a child or how many times you'll track the child's progress after you've done your goal planning and, and, you've done, and you're working on your interventions, you'll go back and just look at the items that you're concentrating on the IFSP or the IEP and you'll just go back and do that progress monitoring um, either quarterly or once a year or, or twice a year. But no, there's no, um, there, there's not a different assessment for uh, the beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year, and, and so forth. Okay, we have a question about um, the OSEP data. Can you share how the APS pools the OSEP data for sharing with the states and the feds? Sure. Give me just one second. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into AEPSI and go into My Reports. I'm going to go to Class Reports. And I'm going to show that are in a very broad date range. And this is how an entry report would look like for a program. And if you're a program that works with Part B and Part C kiddos, it would show up like this. Your Part C kids would be at the top, the number of children that were included, the number of children that were excluded, and your Part B information would be at the bottom. And you would be able to take this information and uh, submit it to the state on, on the, the state approved form that, that the state has created uh, or however way you would be taking it to the state. The states, depending on unless we work with the states directly, um, if we're not working with the state directly, they won't have access to go in here and pull this information. You would have to send them the results by putting it on um, a form that they've created or, or how they've set it up to get the information to them. And you can export from the APSI system your, the data that you would need to send them. Yep. By exporting the data, instead of clicking View, you would go over to Export and either export an XML or CSV, which would put it, CSV would put it right into an Excel file for you. 
Great. Thanks, Kevin, for showing that. Um, okay, we have a question. Are these curriculum and intervention activities generally made available to families to access online? Um, so APSI is, um, the access is just from the professionals. Um, so the professionals can share the intervention activities and the different curricular items um, with families, but families can't log in um, on their own and access the system and see the activities. Um, a follow-up follow question about the archiving. Um, so is it a dollar per child per year for archiving? Um, yes, and <laughs> what, that's once you get into, if the child is archived during a subscription year, that child is charged full, full price um, because it was active during that current subscription year. But when, it's, when they're archived moving forward, that's when it's a dollar per child per year. But once they're taken out of archive, once that child record is woken up, then it, it's it would go to the um, full price per child record. Okay, thanks. Um, we have a question about the adaptive section and whether classroom management skills are assessed in the adaptive section. Um, I think the adaptive section, the items I've seen are kind of more self-help items. Kevin, do you want to, I don't know how much you can expand a little bit on the adaptive section. I think that's where like the feeding and the dressing items come in. Is that correct? Or maybe you can pull it up on the online system. So this is the level two, this is the three to six year old kid. So it has items about personal hygiene, dressing, and eating. So it doesn't really have um, classroom behavior items, no. Some of those are, might be um, following directions, might be in um, either the cognitive or the social, possibly the social area. interaction with others and participation. I think some of that um, would fit into skills for participating in a classroom. So I know all of this is probably hard to to take in during this short period, but if you um, do sign up for a free trial, you'll be able to have access to see all of the um, all of the different items and all of the reports and other features of the system. Um, oh, we have a question to see. Um, Kevin, back to the OSEP, um, where you showed the OSEP near entry data. Can you show the progress data, the second? I think the first two were the near entry, but then the next two were the progress data. So you just show um, our viewers what those reports um, look like. Sure. In the system, this report shows the same way the first report did, the entry scores, except I don't have any Part C kiddos in this report, but I do have Part uh, B kiddos. And what this report will do is it will split it up. This number in parentheses tells you how many children fell within that reporting category. And the children excluded, when you run the categories for each child report, it's the same exact report, you're just looking at the data a little differently. When you look at the categories for each child, 
I didn't have my date, so it didn't know what to run the reports for. This report is going to tell you why children were excluded. So, Teresa Mendoza in my Part C program, she had less than six months in service. OSEP only wants, to, wants children reported on that are in the, in the program for at least six months. And AEPSI will automatically remove that information from the report. Other reasons could be you're missing near entry data. Um, you're missing near exit data. And that means one of two things. Your near entry or your near exit data or assessment was either not completed or you didn't mark that assessment for near entry or near exit. And the, all this report does is instead of just giving you that aggregate percentage, it's going to give you each child that were, was included, their date of birth, what their entry date was, how old were they, what their exit date was, again, how old were they, how long were they in the program. You can tell Danny Johnson was in our program a little too long. <laughs> you need to clean that up a little. But it will also give the three reporting outcomes and what the child's AEPS outcome score was and what their same age benchmark score was and what category they fell in. And the categories are listed below. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so we're nearing the end of our hour here. Um, so I think we'll take one Oh, just one last question, and then um, for the rest of that we, if we didn't get to your question, we'll, um, we'll get in touch with you personally to answer your question. Um, we had a question about whether APS has been used with the Reggio philosophy, or st whether it's been studied with the Reggio philosophy. Um, I'm not aware of any studies the authors have published, um, or specific stories I've heard of um, programs using the APS with the, the Reggio philosophy. Um, they likely are because the APS is um, being used widely, but we're, I'm going to have to contact the authors, I think, to um, follow up on this question. Unless, Kevin, do you have any, have you talked to any customers um, recently that use the Reggio approach? No, not personally. I think this would definitely be a question for the authors. Um, but we can also maybe send a follow-up link with all the studies that AEPS has been done with. Yes, we do have a page. Um, so we have a, we have a biography. Yeah, on the APSinteractive.com site, a list of the studies. Um, but we will contact the authors and then follow up about that. Um, so thank you very much um, for participating today. And you, you'll get an email tomorrow with a recording of this webinar. So please feel free to send that, share that with your colleagues um, or other staff members. Uh, so thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us. Have a good rest of the day. Have a good